Hello everyone and happy Cinco de Mayo. I'm Sharon Waxman, the founder and the editor-in-chief of The Wrap and the founder of Wrap Women. Welcome to our webinar today called Self-Care 101, Mastering Your New Normal, featuring Tia Maori, Allison Stoner, and Jen Pasteloff. We're so excited to have these thoughtful, insightful women during this period of isolation where we can come together and bring you guys new content and insight and connection as we continue to build our women's community. In addition to our webinars, we've also launched a weekly newsletter that is expanding our RAP Women community of ambitious and empowered women. We are based in LA and that is the cultural touchstone for us, but we extend all across the country to women of like mind. So if you're looking for suggestions on TV shows or podcasts, career advice, wellness, recipes, interviews, please sign up at rapwomen.com and look for the newsletter link to get the weekly newsletter. And you'll also find all kinds of information there about our upcoming events, virtual and live, different articles, where to follow us on social. So we're super excited to have this uh, discussion today with these incredible women. Uh, let me just give us a few housekeeping notes so that you know what to expect. I'm gonna be speaking with our panelists for the next 30 minutes. And then after 30 minutes, we will take questions from you all. Uh, our moderator, Zoe, will tee up the questions so you can ask them in the comment section, which is to the right of the screen. So please share your thoughts and your ideas during this discussion um, here and on social media. This conversation is streaming not just on our platform, but on those of all our speakers. You can follow us and tag us at The Rap Women on Twitter and at Rap Women on Insta. So here we go. Let's meet our panelists. Welcome to Tia Maori, who rose to fame, I'm sure you all know, as a 90s pop culture icon starring in Sister Sister alongside her twin, Tamara. Since then, she's added author, business owner, chef, mother, and wife to her long list of accomplishments. Most recently, Tia launched Answer, a range of vitamins that she co-founded after having health and fertility issues. She wanted to create a line that connected with people from all backgrounds and encourage people to take charge of their health. After the success of that launch, she's answer has expanded into men's and children's vitamins for the whole family. She's also currently starring on the Netflix series Family Reunion and hosts her own YouTube channel, Tia Maori's Quick Fix. Hey, Tia. Hi. How are great you guys? To have you. It's so great to have you. Wonderful. And it's her little girl's birthday today, so she carved out time. <laughs> yes. An important mom moment. Welcome. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. You mentioned the word community, which I think is really, really important. I find that being a mom, a woman in general, community is what we need to just get through our day. So I'm so excited to be here to just chat with amazing women. Amazing. Our next panelist is Jen Pasteloff, the author of the national bestseller On Being Human. She travels the world with her unique workshop On Being Human, also same name, which is a hybrid of yoga related movement, writing, sharing, and occasionally a dance party. She also leads writing and the body workshops with author Lydia Yuknavich, and as well as workshops with Elizabeth Gilbert, uh, who is currently on the cover, who she's currently on the cover of Yoga Journal with, very cool. During the pandemic, Jen has started a new campaign called Hashtag on Being Human 2020 that gives $100 gift cards to people in need of food. Numerous celebrities, including Pink, have joined her cause and gone live on Jen's Instagram, which is called, uh, you follow the, ha the hashtag chat and feed. So welcome to you, Jen. Hi, thank you. It's an honor to be here. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have I, you. I put on lipstick. <laughs> exactly. And the bedroom. And pants. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> and our final panelist is Allison Stoner, who's known for her work in film, TV, dance, music, and digital content. You may recognize her from the Missy Elliott music video, Work It, or films including Step Up and Cheaper by the Dozen. Today, Allison focuses on creating thought-provoking content that inspires viewers. Her short form series, Alchemy, centers on mental health and airs weekly on her YouTube channel. She also has a podcast called Simplexity, 
which simplifies life's complexities through interviews with experts from different fields. Now, during quarantine, Allison recently completed a 14 days of mindfulness series on her Insta Live, which consists of two daily streams, including a mental health check-in, simple meditation, and a mindful movement course. All these videos are available on her YouTube channel. Uh, and we're also uh, delighted to welcome Allison to our RAP Women community of next gen ambassadors who are shaping the industry and helping bring our community together. So amazing. Thank you for being <laughs> all you guys. That was kind of enough. We can wrap it up right there. I mean, just like, <laughs> being in your presence, I already feel better. Mm. So, so let me just start with. Um, you know, I can throw it out to the group, but maybe let's just start with Tia, who's dealing with balancing mom stuff and um, work stuff. Yeah. And uh, how are you doing? How are you doing? You know, I'm I'm doing I'm doing well. If you know me, I'm very transparent and I'm very honest. And I will say, I've been bipolar at moments, meaning. Some days are great and other days are not so great. But what I've learned um, through this time is this is all new to everyone, meaning I'm allowing to give myself grace. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm hanging in there. I've tried to sort of create some sort of routine because that works for me and especially with the kids um, so that we have something to look forward to. Um, but you know, this is, this is all a learning process. This is new to us and, um, we're adjusting. And once I started to focus on the word, um, adjust, that's when I started to, you know, to feel a little better about the situation. Um, cause that's just what we're all just doing over here is we're just adjusting and then giving ourselves patience and grace to just get through it. I mean, I do really think there's something extra challenging. This is a challenging time for everybody, but let's be honest. Anybody who is dealing with small children, which my children are grown, and so I'm thankful yes. that I don't have to face that challenge, but I think pretty much all of you guys are dealing with balancing that juggling act. Um, Jen, when we talked earlier, you talked about having, a, a, I don't know if it's what we'll call it, a meltdown moment or something like just having... <laughs> A, a, a critical moment where you needed to check in with yourself. Can you can you share a little bit about that? Yeah. So, um, by the way, I lip read, so I I am like trying. I think I think I heard what you said, but um, yeah. So I, I jumped in when this pandemic started. Um, well, Jen, I, can you explain to our listeners when you say you lip read because it's yes. hard to tell that you have some any hearing disabilities. Yes. Most people wouldn't know that. So yes, yeah. So I'm without my hearing aids, I'm deaf. Um, I wasn't born deaf, I'm small d deaf, and it's gotten progressively worse as I've gotten older. So now without my hearing aids, I can't hear. And I also have tinnitus all the time. And so um, I, I have to read lips. The hearing aids help, but I still have to read lips. So I'll, so Zoom and, you know, it's interesting. And masks have been very challenging for me and upsetting because mm. I lip read. So I did I did a whole post on that and I appreciate people. Most people hadn't even thought about that. You know, th there's clear masks now, but um, it creates a lot of panic. And so I lip read. And uh, I, when this pandemic started, I jumped into this project. I jumped into asking how may I serve, which I try to live my life by. But the reason I did it, one of the reasons was I was really struggling with depression and it was the way that got me out of bed. It really saved me um, was to ask. And the way that I found was I have this big platform. So I started raising money. What happened was uh, on Sunday or Saturday, I thought I have not had a day off in six days. I, I was really losing my uh, marbles. And so I took a day off and I realized how profoundly I need to do that. You know, as cliche as that expression it may be sometimes, like you can't give from an empty cup, there's nothing more true. And so whether it's, you know, just laying on the sofa or, or putting my feet in grass somewhere, but to balance being of service and taking downtime. And, and unfortunately, I learned the hard way. I forgot, you know, and, and had to kind of get to the place where I felt like I was uh, losing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it's so great to hear that kind of um, honesty 
from yeah. because you spend your life teaching people and coaching people. Um, I, I know I read that in your bio, but I just want to emphasize that Jennifer goes all around the world giving uh, uh, sessions to, to large groups of people, to young people, to old people. Um, I think being of service is, a, is what your life is about. And so it's so important to be able to, for us to hear that you have a moment where, where you might crack. Well, you know? um, yesterday, Cheryl Strayed, you know, very famous author, and she had a column called Dear Sugar, which they made a book out of. And so she was on my live and she said, can I give you some advice? And everyone's like, mm. oh my God, she got sugared. And she basically gave me this whole, um, you know, basically thing on self care. And I thought, well, we should have her today on here. <laughs> because you just <laughs> yes, reminded me of yeah. how important it is. So yeah, I, I like Tia said, trans, uh, transparency to me is the way I live. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. I, I also find that it's so interesting how it's so hard for women in general just to allow yourself that self-care. I don't know if you guys feel that as well. It's like, you know, it's like you feel guilty sometimes putting yourself first before your kids or someone else. And I think it's it's a natural instinct that we have to nurture others, but we should also just realize that how can you be the best you that you can be or reach your potential if you don't take care of yourself. So kudos to you, Jen, for, you know, taking that time out and say, you know what, I need this. Because I feel like we as women in general, we should definitely push more for that. Absolutely. And I'll pop in here. Hi, yeah. everyone. Thanks Hi. for having me. I didn't get to say thank you properly earlier after that wonderful introduction. I wanted to piggyback on what Tia shared. Um, our first relationship is with ourselves. And oftentimes, even when we're looking to serve someone else, it still can very easily and often be from a place of neediness, a void we haven't yet filled. So the more we do aspire toward a, a space of wholeness in our being, then not only does that yes, fill up our cup and let it overflow into others, but it also can be a healthier version of contribution. So you're not just reenacting your past pain and patterns, but you're actually going inward, experiencing healing, and then you can detect where where and how you can serve without it becoming you know that um, repeat of the martyrdom or the you know perpetual self-sacrifice that just leads to burnout over and over yes. again so <laughs> yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean Allison can you share a little bit about your personal journey how you went uh, you, you made you made some kind of pivot in your career to focus on mental health and on uh, that aspect. Can you can you share a little bit about how that came about? Yes. So I started in entertainment at six years old. I was performing at three years old. And my entire sense of identity was cultivated in this atmosphere of learning how to get people's approval in order to book a job, in order to pay, uh, you know, I, I provided for my family in many ways. And there was so much tied into this simple concept of winning approval. My livelihood and survival were attached to that. And mm. so the questions I asked myself subconsciously were always, how can I make you like me? Um, mm. How can I remain relevant, important, admirable, set apart, excellent, overachieving, so that my safety and security can be guaranteed? And of course, you can see how as an actress, I wasn't just playing characters on screen. I was also learning the art of playing characters with every person I encountered just to find a place of belonging and a sense of security. And so I reached a, a point where I knew that wasn't sustainable. I had no spine of my own and I needed to go within and cultivate that space of feeling at home in my own skin. And as a dancer, singer, and actress, storytelling is of course at the core of, of who we are as humans and, and artists. And I started to ask myself, what story am I already telling in my body every day? And it goes to what you were saying, Tia, about, oh my word, getting a phone call at the same time. <laughs> That's okay. 
That's Conveniently okay. from an Olympic athlete who's going to be doing another live stream with me. Okay. Um, great. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, right. And by um, the way, interruptions are okay. Children photobombing is okay. Dogs, cats, excellent. Uh, you <laughs> know, cats of any kind, elderly <laughs> parents, whatever you have, it's all fine. Oh. Here okay. I thought I had everything on do not disturb, but there we go. So, 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 so quickly, and then I know we can keep the conversation flowing. Um, we all tell a story in our body language every day and how we enter the room with people when we're feeling intimidated we tend to close off or become small when we feel empowered we expand and i started asking myself what are those feedback loops that i've had inside my mind in my brain since the beginning and how can i start to become aware of them so i can change the story i'm telling every day in my body language and in my verbal communication and then of course, anything that I learn, I want to be able to use my platform to serve and offer others. And so I started creating that content and you see just how important, especially right now it is for us to feel, uh, to find ways to give our power back to ourselves, um, mm -hmm. to, to find freedom when we feel stuck and trapped mm -hmm. um, and to find our voice so we can tell uh, the story that we want to tell. So I'd love to hear from each of you if you could um, share like practical ideas, you know, what are you doing on a daily basis or whenever to kind of help bring you back to your center or to be kind to yourself so we can go through the day? Yeah, I think for me, it's, it's all about self-care right kind of like what you said allison you know focusing on yourself and creating some sort of healing there and when i started to feel just incredibly overwhelmed with everything even just overwhelmed with having to have to be productive you know what i mean like during this time you're hearing you got to be doing this start this start that and it's like oh my gosh i just kind of want to just center with myself first before i can give um, and what I did was I started to meditate. I mean, I was meditating before, um, but actually I would meditate now with my husband. And I remember the first time that I did it during this quarantine, I just started to cry. Like literally, wow. I mean, just all of the emotions that I was holding in, because again, as a mom, you're like, I don't want my, I don't want my kids to see how frustrated and overwhelmed I am. I don't want, I want them to see me cry. I gotta be great for them. You know what I mean? And, and that's what I, I, I realized that I was doing. And not only that, the realities of what's going on in the world, the statistics and how long we have to be quarantined. What is our new normal gonna be like? It's just all of these things were kind of just coming at me like a big wave. And when I just started to meditate, I just bawled and I was like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I needed because I just released and I became aware of those feelings and I just kind of let it go. So meditation has definitely been helpful. Moving my body, just getting those endorphins, just working and moving um, has been beneficial for me, not overdoing it. You know what I mean? Um, maybe doing a little bit of yoga, doing about 20 minutes of cardio, running, um, and also having some sort of schedule because mm. I think that helps well, me have, you know, a routine. So I'm not just kind of like floating in the wind, you know, because that's what gets me anxious. Well, we have one of our commenters who said crying is good. I'm a, I'm a fan of crying. Crying's okay. Um, mm -hmm. Allison or Jen, do you have any uh, specific things you, that you think are particularly helpful? Jen? Well, yeah. Um, one of the things, so uh, I call it dorking out. <laughs> So in my workouts, I'll, have, I'll play Don't Stop Believing and everyone will be, you know, they've been <laughs> crying, crying and sharing and it's, and then there's this moment of levity. And so in order, another way that I'm creating money for this food drive is the Dork It Out Dance Challenge. And now you've all been officially challenged, boom. But <laughs> what it is, is, what it is, is it's this three minute or however long, I'm sorry, no, it's one minute, however long you want to do it, but one minute clip, and then you challenge three people. But it, the idea for me with the dorking it out is find moments of levity and silliness. And like Tia, you're saying dance parties, yeah. uh, you know, spontaneous dance parties with my son who's about yeah. to be four. Um, I am completely letting myself off the hook. Should is an asshole. So I'm not <laughs> shooting myself. I'm, tr I'm trying not to. I'm eating whatever I want. That's a quote. That's a quote. Well, it's a quotable quote. Yes. Should is an, an asshole. asshole. 
I'm I'm doing my best to quiet the inner asshole by meditation. I have loads of friends that are doing free meditations online, like master meditation teachers. Um, I'm I'm watching shows on Netflix that I love, even dark ones like Ozark. I'm doing yeah. things that I want to do, not actually yes. feel like I should be doing. And then going back to what I said was like finding those those pockets of time where I go, I'm not doing, I'm I'm doing nothing for this project, nothing for work. I'm just going to be. Yes. Um, Ooh, I like that. The last thing is I find something tangible every day. So in my workshops, I'll say to people, what does self-care or self-compassion mean to you? And they'll say, it means loving yourself or forgiving yourself, which are beautiful answers. But then I say, okay, now I want you to give me something tangible that you're going to do within 24 hours. It can be like, I'm going to poop without my three-year-old at my feet. It can be like, it can be like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sleep without my iPhone next to my head. And it's like, it forces you to think of one thing. Maybe it's just brushing your hair, but mm -hmm. at least one thing a day that's tangible. That's not out there in the ether. That's not woo. That's just a tangible, mm -hmm. actionable thing you can do. Oh. Yay! Yes, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dork it out! <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. Okay. So All what right. I might add to that is okay. a few things. I spend a lot of time with my podcast guests learning about their fields. And recently I had Jim Quick on and he's a world-renowned brain coach. And so he was teaching me about how to... Did you say uh, brain coach? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. To, I thought to, you said rain. <laughs> brain coach. Brain coach. <laughs> okay, I never to heard of that. Optimize yeah. productivity, performance. And of course, I want to be careful here not to throw, you know, high expectations on a time when if what you need to do is be still and silent or dork it out, then do that. Um, if you want to use this formula, he he calls it the five C's during quarantine, and it's clarity, creativity, contribution, capabilities, and care. And you don't wow. have to do them all at the same time, but if you're looking for a guiding theme for every day of the week or even for the entire week, you can focus perhaps on one of these concepts. Clarity is of course offering yourself the chance to reflect on what this time means for you and what the impending changes and transitions mean for yourself, your family, your future, um, and finding finding clarity instead of confusion and chaos. Those are other okay. C's we don't want. Mm. And then of course creativity. I think people often associate creativity with traditional arts when really at all times throughout the day, even the way you have a conversation with someone is a form of poetry. How you, like I said, enter a room has a dance and a manner and posture to it. So finding your version of creativity, maybe it's in the kitchen, maybe it's not just writing a song, but it's going outside and allowing yourself to daydream, um, of course, with your mask and all of your safety precautions if you have a poor and backyard, which I don't. Um, and then of course, contribution. If you find maybe that you are so overwhelmed by how much you're absorbed with yourself and you need to kind of reflect that light somewhere else, contribution is there for you. And capabilities, is there a skill you've been wanting to learn but you've been putting off? Mm -hmm. Can you set aside 15 minutes of the day, even five minutes, Duolingo, learn a language, whatever that is, and then of course care, um, which would be the self-care that we're talking about. But sometimes for me, it's helpful to just pick one of the C's if I'm feeling distraught and overwhelmed in the day and say, what can I do that will, that will, uh, you know, help me step into that particular C. Um, so today I need clarity because <laughs> I'm strategically planning a, a pivot in my business. Um, so I'm going to set aside some time to do that. And then another practical game, I call it, is keep, toss, and transform. And it's, a game that I play when I'm wanting to Marie Kondo my life. I was just going to say that. <laughs> I was just, I went, that's exactly where I went. Okay. Yeah. But instead of 
the idea of, you know, does this spark joy, which is incredible and valuable. I like to insert the word wholeness into the equation. Does this person relationship, does this item, does this job, does this whatever it is, lead to a sense of wholeness or a further sense of being broken and fragmented and confused. And if it leads to wholeness, obviously keep that. If it's absolutely destructive and toxic, even if that's just a, a belief that keeps playing in your brain, toss it. But I think as in most cases in life, things are not black or white. It lives somewhere in the gray and that's where that transform category comes in. Okay, my spouse and I, my partner and I, my family and I are at odds in this really uncomfortable space. This form of communication is not working, but we can't get rid of each other, nor do we really want to. How can we transform this mode of communication? So going through mm. whatever is on your plate or whatever is taking up your headspace or, you know, just on your heart so, so intensely right now and asking yourself, does this lead to wholeness or a sense of brokenness? And do I want to keep, toss, or transform it? That can be a practical and easy method to take the guessing game out of this period and really just isolate one thing at a time. Woo, girl. Love it. Alex and your voice. I could just listen yeah. to Alex and talk forever. I don't know something about your voice. I'm like... I'm so relaxed. <laughs> I just love you how you compartmentalized all mm. of that. You know what I mean? I have to. <laughs> because yeah. otherwise it feels like a blob. <laughs> no, I have, I, have, I have two things I want to bring up. Um, that was just beautiful from all of you. And I'm going to take, I know that I'll be processing what you guys are sharing here because it's a lot of very good, chewy, good, juicy stuff. I have a couple of things I want to share for myself and then we're going to turn to the questions. One is, um, and I'm not asking for advice necessarily, but if you have thoughts about it, I keep thinking during this quarantine and, and you know, I wear a lot of hats in my job. I'm an editor in chief of the site. I, I run a rap women um, community, or at least I help uh, in, try to try to lead it. And I'm also the CEO of the company. Um, I still, I've grown children, but, what I think about a lot is I feel like I should be getting something done during this quarantine, right? I feel like I should be have something to show for all of this downtime, something other than just surviving and getting through it. Like, and I just wondered if any of you guys feel this way or if our listeners feel this way, like I should be starting to write a new book. Um, a lot of people feel like they want to read a book. Re reading a book would be great. Writing a book would be even better. <laughs> even reading a book would be even better. <laughs> We're talking about like I keep saying to myself, I need to sit down. I have no excuse. I need to like get good at piano. Again, I used to be a pretty decent piano player. There's just so many things. Like I should be taking yoga every day. I have no excuse. And whoever said should is an asshole. Should is an asshole. Yes, should thank is an you. Asshole. I feel like that should be photo bonding here. But I can't get away from the feeling that I should be emerging from this quarantine of downtime with something to show for it. So I just want to put that out there. Does anybody else have that feeling? You know, yes. That is how I started this quarantine. I felt like, you know, of course, because I saw everybody else doing it, whether that was on Instagram, Facebook or whatever. And then some of my friends were doing it. And then some of my people who are CEOs or, you know, business people, they were doing it, but that's what was getting me overwhelmed. And I'll tell you why. I am that go-getter. I am very aggressive when it comes to my work. I love my work. I call myself a workaholic in a good way. You know what I mean? Because I love to give, but I've learned through this whole process that it's okay, in my opinion, to just chill and just relax. It's fine. It's okay. Kind of like what Allison was saying to be still at moments. And once I started to embrace the latter and do something opposite of what was going on in my head, I was like, whoa, this is actually what I needed to just relax, to embrace that uncomfortable feeling um, and to just listen to what's going on in my mind 
and have a conversation with it. Because I felt like whenever I was going, I was moving, I was doing all of that. I wasn't becoming one with what was going on in my head. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like a way that you can escape from your feelings or what you're going through at that moment. And right now you can't do that. You, you are really forced to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what, maybe this is what I need to work on. Um, and so I guess, you know, my advice to you is, you know, it's okay to, to, to have those feelings. Um, but it's also okay to just not have to have those feelings or not have to be productive. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. I would add to that each country is experiencing this pandemic according to its own culture and values mm -hmm. and the myth that it loves to tell. And we here <laughs> in the States right. love to say we are the go-getters. We yes. are the, the roll up our sleeves and work hard and it will lead to success mm -hmm. country. And in reality, what we're doing is we're only measuring success by the tangible and visible product pro yes. product or progress. Yes. And something I often tell people is if you find stillness first, you'll be able to move more deliberately. If you find silence first, you'll be able to hear the symphony of your day more clearly. If you're only ever measuring things by what is tangible and visible, you're only seeing one part of who you are and what you offer as, as a being and vessel, downloading information and turning it into something beautiful for the world. And so I encourage everyone in this time to see the value, the magic, the beauty, even if at first it's uncomfortable because it's a little new for us since we're used to just going, going, going. There's magic in the silence and stillness that actually might hold answers to the very things you've been trying to accomplish if you would just slow down and listen. And mm -hmm. another thing that, that Jim and I spoke about on the recent episode, he shared your greatest treasure may be in the work or the thing you're avoiding. Mm -hmm. And so if you're mm -hmm. avoiding silence and stillness, that might have the exact key that you've been after through all of the productivity. So mm. don't discount it just because our country doesn't value it or look at the scientific method and say, but prove me that you did this. Show me your physical empirical data and evidence. Like, no, mm. some of this, especially in a room full of women who are particularly tapped into the intuitive, something mm. that is intangible, that is nurturing, that is literally the creative force that brings life into this world, you can't always measure that in how many steps you walked today. Sometimes those steps are, are invisible or imagined. So just giving yourself credit um, to value that as growth as well. Oh. Yes. Well, yes. well, I'm going to make it real, real quick. I don't feel a pressure to get anything done. I think like Tia, I did in the very beginning. But what I, my goal is I wear fake eyelashes. I get extensions. My goal is just to have one eyelash on each eyelash. That's it. Okay, I'm and taking really one okay off right that. now. <laughs> um, I, you know, uh, I, I know we got to go to the questions, but it's funny because right when this happened, everybody said, Jen, quick, you need to turn your your should your stuff in online classes and i haven't been able to and i may or i may not and i really um have embraced should as an asshole so so the answer is no i did at first but no i absolutely do not as, as if i like end up like, not uh ripping all my hair out and like you know i don't know oh, watching I every show i'm happy <laughs> All right, let's turn Love to some it. questions. I have I have one more in my back pocket uh, that I'm going to slide in somewhere, but let's let's open it up to our beautiful oh audience. Oh my Tia. gosh, Tia, what is your Tia. meditation practice? Do you use an app? Yes. So basically, um, I have used an app. Calm has been incredible. I've used that app, and what I love about that app is. 
of course, you you have so many other things that you can do with that app. I'll meditate to it. But then the other thing that I like about that app is it sends messages to me to check in with me. Like, how are you feeling today? And mm-hmm. however I'm feeling, then it'll guide me to something else that could be beneficial, whether it's a quote. Oh, there you go. <laughs> awesome. In regards to the meditation, I have i don't know if you know of this, Allison. You may know Bio Neural Beats. Oh, um, yes. Oh, like. And brainwave entrainment. Hello, yes. science. Oh, yes. my gosh. I just started doing that. I've been doing it ever since this quarantine. And it just what gets is it? me. What it's, is it? It's bio neural me- beats. So it basically, the sounds taps into different um, uh, waves, brain waves. And I like to get into the deep, deep, deep brain waves. I just feel more rejuvenated when I do that. Um, and so I've been meditating to that. And I'll do 10 minutes in the morning. And I'll do the breathing in and the breathing out, like breathing into, you know, eight count or breathing in eight counts and then releasing eight counts or something like that. Um, but I count it out. Um, and then I'll do 10 minutes at night. So it's 20 Mm. minutes within the day. And for me, that's practical with kids running around and, you know, um, so that's what I do. That's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another question, Zoe, is we, um, our, our silent and invisible moderator is Zoe. She's helping us out. (laughs) Thanks. And until the question pops up, just to get geeky for a second, you have alpha, beta, um, delta, theta. These are some of the different brain waves. And it will, um, the the beats will actually help you enter those states of awareness or calmness more quickly than if you might just be trying to achieve that through your own breath. Definitely recommend it. Also, you can go on Spotify and search solfagio frequency or even meditation music, binaural beats. It's B-I-N-A-U-R-A-L, I believe. Mm -hmm. And you'll find playlist after playlist with all of these songs that are tuned to those specific frequencies for you. All you got to do is click play. (laughs) Okay, we have a question from Chip Ross saying, Allison, you're in your 20s. Many of your peers are getting antsy and want to disregard the rules and go party. What Mm -hmm. advice do you have for them? Chip, am I assuming correctly that you are not in your 20s? (laughs) (laughs) So (laughs) careful about calling out my peers. My peers and I have been fully quarantined (laughs) and isolated and practicing safe physical distancing um, this whole time. We're in week eight. Um, You know, for, for my audience online, I try to show through example, I think when you're dealing with uh, a generation who's trying to figure out who they are still, we don't respond to more instruction. Uh, A lot of us graduated from school of some sort relatively recently, and we don't want more overt teaching and lessons. But if through the power of cool and culture (laughs) and relevance, we can see the example. And that's that's a real thing. I myself, I love books. I love studying. I love lessons. Um, But not everyone my age likes the philosophy of life. Um, and and so I'm having to uh, shift my content structure, being fully candid and transparent. If anyone wants to assess, you can scroll through my feed and see it shifting slowly right now to utilizing apps like TikTok to introduce concepts of mindfulness. But in order to do that first, I have to build trust with you by being culturally relevant and recreating some of my old iconic moments from my childhood. And then once you think I'm cool, when I tell you to wash your hands or show you that I'm washing mine, you might absorb that information. So that's kind of my approach currently right now with my generation. And, and, you know, I, I'm seeing everyone, every generation. I live near the water and all of them, there are families with young folks and the little kids don't have masks or any protection, even if the parents do. And I'm like, come, come on y'all, we gotta, we can do better. Um, but, do, you say but, do you say something actually, or do you? 
I just mean, I'm not out these I see the news reports. I'm not outside to <laughs> to engage with them. Right. Um, I'm right. not even going to, to stores, you know? I'm like really, really hermit crabbing right now. <laughs> Got it. Got it. A uh, post meeting it. Um, okay, question for Jen from someone, uh, Sherry Collins. Welcome. As a deaf person, I know lip reading is exhausting. Now that many events are being canceled or postponed, how are you coping doing webinars online? And have you considered asking for captioning? Mm. Okay, great question. I yeah, that is a great question. Um, so uh, my hearing aids are high tech and it streams right into my ears. So um, this is actually harder with headphones, but um, normally if I'm on a phone doing it, it's actually better than in person because it streams right into my ears. Mm. Stuff like this is harder for me. So right now I'm struggling a little bit and, and, and lip reading is really, really exhausting. And um, it's made me a really amazing listener, but it's also really hard and I sleep a lot and I get frustrated mm -hmm. as far as the captioning goes. Absolutely. I feel bad because I'm doing all these online, uh, Instagram lives with people, with celebrities to get money. I don't think you can caption with Instagram live and especially when you're doing an interview and it's, and it's such an immediate thing that I haven't been able to do that. And I've, and I've, said my deep apologies and I'm also okay with it right now because it's for this emergency thing but for other stuff absolutely and sometimes I forget so I really appreciate being called out called in um because I rely on them so much and I forget and so when when people point it out that not everything when it's so ableist that not everything is captioned you know I I, I just appreciate that so yes it's exhausting I haven't um exactly transitioned to the webinar world yet uh, I'm just doing my Instagram lives, but um, I don't know. Come back to me in a month or so, and I'll let you know how it's going. And I'll keep advocating for subtitles, uh, captions. Well, it's something that we haven't considered. So, Sherry, thank you for asking the question because it's not something that had even been brought to our attention. And, Jen, you're so um, amazing at per just getting through whatever the task is at hand that it – I often forget that you are that you're doing it with this extra challenge on your back because you do it so seamlessly and so you know it's good to to have a, a, a well I I, I want to say something about that really quickly which is um I was on a podcast with Sherry Salah and I said this to her and now I love I said I now lead with the thing that I used to be ashamed of so I used to be so ashamed about my deafness and about depression and whatever it may be. And now I, like the minute I meet someone, I, I go, by the way, I'm deaf without my hearing aids. I lip read and I just get it out of the way. And I, I think great. it's so important um, to, to be up with stuff for that. So then other people can actually, it's, it's like the same way of asking for help. And so other people are there with you, you know? So exactly. Thank you. thank you for seeing exactly. me. Exactly. Yeah. Lots. And if people watching are interested in making their captions more accessible, you can see the hashtag accessibility text on Instagram and other social mm. media platforms. I have them in every one of my posts. And a lot of my friends who are deaf or hard of hearing, um, hearing impaired, uh, sight impaired, we try to make sure we're accommodating and being thoughtful um, so everyone can experience social media in an equal way. Um, there's also simple apps like uh, Mix Captions and it will close caption your video for you so you don't have to input the information and it's free and um you know i think it's 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 one extra step before you click post and it makes the world a lot more inclusive um yeah. to make sure that everyone can experience what you're sharing that that is a terrific note and i will uh, take that up with our team to to uh to do that because we should and why not it's just a matter of being mm -hmm. uh, reminded to to be that inclusive inclusive in that way uh thank you guys wow i'm learning stuff okay new question um do you find yourself on a roller coaster mentally and physically during this quarantine one day you're doing great motivated productive and the next day is the complete opposite I have no idea what this person is talking about <laughs> Well, I had yeah. mentioned that earlier, you know, saying that 
I've found myself to feel and be bipolar during this, um, you know, pandemic. One day I feel great. And then the next day, the low is like a low. Um, but what I've, but, but what I've done is, you know, I've kind of become aware of what those triggers are. So, you know, if I am watching the news too much or just kind of feeding myself with all of this negativity, um, then I'll, you know, I'll find myself getting down um, or just overwhelmed or confused or frustrated, um, focusing on the statistics um, as opposed to, you know, finding some sort of optimism. Um, so, yeah. And again, like I was saying earlier, this is all new to me. It's new to me to be like, oh, hey, everything's great. Oh my gosh, why am I crying? You know what I mean? So <laughs> I've just learned to give myself grace. And it was, it was told to me in this perspective, this is a trauma, kind of like what we're all going through. And when you break your leg or when you hurt yourself, you nurture it. You, you, there's patience. You take time with yourself. So, you know, look at this whole situation from that perspective. And once it was told to me, you know, with that, um, um, you know, perspective, I started to just kind of understand a little more with what's going on with me, you know, mentally and just, you know, be okay with yourself, give yourself grace. If I can add to that, it's interesting that when we maybe experience a diagnosis formally, we not only get the plan for um, the rehabilitation and recovery period, there's also aftercare. And mm. what we're not considering perhaps right now is that this isn't just a period of time that then things flip back. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a need for an aftercare program mm. for ourselves. And instead of having an individual doctor come in and say, here's how you take care of your mind, body, emotions, and spirit, a part of this is our our opportunity to go within and learn what our process will be, what will our aftercare look like? Mm -hmm. And um, and I think something that also came to mind when you were speaking is this concept of surrender. When you say the word grace, mm -hmm. and I think about entering the flow state, what I learned about the flow state, this ideal state where things are just going and flowing and you're like in your zone, is it actually combines both discipline and surrender. Mm. So if you're going through a day and you're feeling like you're on the roller coaster, maybe ask yourself, am I missing some discipline of like, yep, mm. today I'm at this time I will do this 10 minute stretch? Mm. Um, or are you missing surrender, trying to control everything in a time when so little is in our control? And for me, that's been my lowest dips so far have centered this concept of feeling so out of control. Mm -hmm. And what you'll notice, like you said, Tia, during any traumatic event, that usually, it usually causes us to activate whatever coping mechanisms we first learned in our earliest traumas in our earliest attachments so you might be right now feeling like you're revisiting some old vices or you're wanting to emotionally eat or you're wanting to do things that logically you're like Ugh, why am i thinking and feeling this way but your body is like well wait the last time we felt this out of control we were you know x number of years old in a different situation feeling trapped and this was the only way we felt okay again so getting to heal some of our coping mechanisms mechanisms is like it's going to t take that amount of patience and grace um and then you know just returning to that idea of if you want to get into flow do you maybe need to add a little more discipline or a little more surrender to your current moment um by the way this conversation is going to be up online because i know i'm probably going to want to watch it again <laughs> <laughs> so, so many good messages that I want to be able to take the time to really take it in. Uh, before we run out of time, I really want to uh, touch on something we haven't touched on yet, which is relationships. Mm. How are we managing our relationships? Uh oh, that caused Allison to <laughs> grab her head. <laughs> in I just have a story. <laughs> um, we are in. Many of us are. There's two. Po there's two polls here. 
Um, some people like Tia are in close quarters in her home, uh, her lovely home, but uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a confined space nonetheless. Uh, Jen, you too, right? With your with your partner and your and your mm -hmm. little boy. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, how do you manage that? We all need our space, and we we all need our space. And then I want to also ask about at the other end of it. And Allison, I don't know if this is the case for you, but some some of us are living alone and and very lonely and don't have. Yeah, we have this online, but it's not the same as being able to have that physical you know, in-person tangible thing. And so can, can, let's just talk about how are you managing relationships and maintaining space? Tia wants to say like, I can see Yes, that. so I'm married to my husband. Um, and, you know, what I have been saying that is that has been extremely beneficial is of course communication, right? But communicate that you need space. Tell that significant other or, you know, whoever you're quarantined with that, you know, during this time, I'm going to need my space. And guess what? That is okay. You know, my husband, he has his little section wherever he needs to go to just to kind of wind down and clear out his mind and just kind of be by himself. That's fine. And the same thing with me. I think what's beneficial is when you talk about this now, as opposed to if you were to get into some sort of altercation or some sort of argument, so it's not taken personally, um, you know, but just be open and honest and say, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to need my space. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, I, I lightly touched on it was communication. A lot of the times when you, you know, get into some sort of altercation or disagreement, you can go to work and you can kind of, you know, create some space there and say, you know, I'm going to talk about this later. I'm going to talk about this later. But guess what? We don't have that right now. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. I was You're like, still you know, here. <laughs> no, yeah, it's like, look, it kind of forces you to communicate and get whatever that was on your mind or that you're going through and just kind of talk it out because you don't want to, you know, there's already a lot going on in the world. You already have a lot of anxiety and all of that. You want to, you know, create your home to have some sort of peace. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't want to be walking around holding on to some sort of, you know, um, disagreement um, without talking about it because it's just going to be added on pressure. So I think just be open and communicate and, you know, talk about it head on. Um, so that's how I've been able to deal with, you know, that <laughs> relationships mm -hmm. within a quarantine. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's really hard. And, uh, you know, one of the whole things my book is about is, is the idea of, of being human and holding more than one thing at once. So, um, yes, communication, you know, I keep working with my husband on that because I do this for a living and he doesn't, you know, communicating. And so he'll, he'll like storm out or he'll get angry. And I know it's not about what it's really about. It's just, he's just frustrated. And so I'm like, let's just talk, let's just communicate. Mm -hmm. But I want to talk really quickly about the idea of holding more than one thing at one time. So it's like, I'm going bananas in a small <laughs> apartment with a three-year-old trying to run, you know, run this campaign. And I'm so grateful and in love with my delicious child at the same time. You know, it's like, we're human. It's not so binary. So, mm. it's, so it goes back to the roller coaster thing, but it's incredibly difficult. It's a blessing to have my husband and my son. And it's also, you know, really, really the hardest thing I've ever done, uh, being confined in a small apartment. Mm. <laughs> and that's the truth. Mm -hmm. Right, like one truth doesn't need to cancel out the other truth or minimize it. I remember reading from the author Esther Perel. She was saying some things are more of, uh, they're not problems to solve, they're paradoxes to manage. Oh, I like that. Mm, that's great. Because I'm always thinking, what's the solution? How do I fix this? And even in terms of how I'm approaching health right now, sometimes we look at our bodies like they're projects or they're objects instead of how can I just manage constantly all the different things that it takes mm, to care for myself. So, mm. um, so that's been a huge thing. And for me, in terms of relationships, so my, my partner and I decided to split right before quarantine and now we're nice. alone together. <laughs> Really? Oh my goodness. Oh my God. 
How and so, are you handling that? My God. The walls are thin and anything I say here is, is news for all of us. I'm first and foremost thankful that we've spent many years together and our communication is intact and our desire to respect each other and ourselves is intact. But I used to find certain comforts, even in physical intimacy that we've now decided out of respect for each other in the transition ahead, we don't want to indulge things that are going to add confusion. And so something that I've had to learn in this sense of aloneness is actually physically being in contact with my own skin. I And I don't just mean like hugging yourself or even, you know, sexually having time of intimacy alone. I'm speaking just at the basics of like, what does it feel like to feel my body and experience physical touch and support myself and say, I'm holding you today. You are held and, and you're not alone. And having that kind of embrace um, when I don't have the embrace coming from another body. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's so been- So beautiful. It, it's, it doesn't always feel beautiful, <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, there are a lot more tears right now. Um, and ultimately I'm thankful for those tears. Um, mm -hmm. I'm getting to remember other times when I felt this lonely and, and I try to view this whole experience as a spiral staircase. Every day, it might look like you're staring at the same room and the same wall as yesterday, but something in that 24 hour period has evolved something has changed, you've had a conversation, you've had some thoughts, you've grown, you've changed. And so now I'm trying to remember that each day in this, it's just another level in the spiral staircase. I might hmm. think I'm the same as yesterday, but I am changing. And it's my opportunity to decide how I'm going to allow that this experience to shape me and how I'm going to shape myself and others. And so, you know, to me, in terms of relationships, it's definitely been a time of looking at the relationship with self. And I can already see how it's changing, how I communicate with other people. And I can be there for them because I'm learning how to be there for myself. And also I have some loved ones who are, you know, in their final hours at the moment. And so I'll be experiencing my first, uh, you know, funeral via Zoom and wow. just just having all of these different transitions occur while I'm in the same room. I'm really, I'm really seeking, like you said, Tia um, and Jen to carve out that space. Mm -hmm. So I don't operate from a, a, the standpoint of fear and scarcity, but I'm really like imagining the abundance of options I have. This is an empty room. Well, then I can create anything I want in here, not trapped. I can create anything I want. And it's starting right now with, with the relationship with myself. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Kudos to you. <laughs> Allison, thank you for sharing that. I'm sure it's not easy to be so honest with Mm -hmm. uh, with us and it, but it's so helpful and nourishing. And we can see from the, the comments that are flowing into this chat room that there are other people who've experienced similar things. Mm -hmm. So um, you're not, I, I know you know this, but you're not alone, but it really Thanks, helps yeah. for us to hear that. If I may, I'd love to invite, I, this conversation has been so nourishing, at least for me, and I hope for those, for you guys and for those listening. Yeah. If I, if I may, I'd really like to invite you to come back and let's reconnect in person when we have our next oh, wrap really live wow. event. We and were, I'm going to hug you all. Yes. Uh, hug, 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 hug. <laughs> if you want that. You won't You're recognize me because my lashes are going to be. Oh, Girl, look, my lashes. <laughs> I'm doing this just for you, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> well we're gonna have we were supposed to have our mentorship our b conference where jen was going to be speaking there and allison um uh is is supposed to be uh part of our next generation of leaders and tia welcome and i Aww. hope that you'll come so when we we haven't dated it i think it's going to be in august it might be september and our big summit is 
who, I don't know our big seven. Who knows? The whole thing may be friggin' digital. I don't know. Last year we had 2,000 people and it was uh, a, wow. a deeply moving. It was a deeply moving and inspiring two days that we spent together. But Amazing. Uh, thank you, Jen. And so may I invite you to let's get together in person and rekindle this conversation. That totally. Is so uh, beautiful. And thank you to all of you, the hundreds of you who have joined us on all of our stream, perhaps thousands, because I don't know, uh, all the people who are out there on our streaming platforms. But Tia, thank you. Jennifer, thank you. thank you. Allison, thank you. We've learned so much. And uh, it feels good just to uh, just to be together. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Happy yeah, birthday. Happy birthday. Hi, Rosie. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank, Bye. You. Thank you. <laughs>